That is our top six. And a good mix of athletes there from lots of different nationalities. And it's hard to pick a favorite in that. I mean, Hannah Moyle perhaps and Brooke maybe the most experienced within that field, but I feel at this stage, it could kind of be won by anyone. It really could be. You've done your fair share of route setting. For people who don't understand, how difficult is it to set a boulder like the one we're seeing here? Well, at times it comes easy, but when you're setting so many boulders throughout the week, like this one boulder we see in front of us was not the route setter's only work of the week. They set so many boulders uh, for both the men and women, so being able to come up with creative moves that will be entertaining for both the crowd and the athletes and then also serve their purpose in separating such a strong field is no easy feat. Mia Krampa will be the first to try it. And it's quite a big move onto a blocked crimp to start things off. You have to be precise. And we can see Mia there having a look at it, checking it out again. There's quite a good foot though. Uh, on the sort of a rep feature there, which should make this pretty doable, we think. Yeah, you'd hope so. And you'll see her pull on the wall pretty quickly because she got to look at this boulder earlier. Sometimes in the semi-final and the qualifier, athletes will take a little bit longer, but in the final, we'll see them get straight to it. So she's got the left toe hook in. Hit the crimp first time, but just peeling off that with the right hand. But got the range, got the distance, and missed that blocker hold that makes things a bit more tricky for them. Yeah, I'm sure she will have learned something from that and will fix whatever mistake kept her from being able to hold that. There are apparently microphones behind the wall, which is why you can hear the banging so clearly. You can also hear breathing, but uh, I can't because there's too much noise going on around me. But apparently you can hear the breathing. So Mia going for a second time. Now, the aim of the game is to climb the boulder in as few tries as possible. If you climb it first go, it's called a flash. Mia hasn't flashed this boulder. And you can see that down on the bottom left where it says T2. That's attempts. And it will now change to a three as, again, she misses, misses that right hand. Now, skin and fatigue is always a factor here because for the women, we'll have a look at that crimp. It's not actually as good as you think it is. a bit slopey. But the women have qualified yesterday. They did semi-finals this morning. Now the finals. Skin might play a part in this. Of course, yeah. And it is warm here and a bit humid too. And so a lot of athletes have been using fans to try and cool down their skin and create a bit of a layer that will stay a bit longer against all of these really high friction holds. But when you compete in three rounds and you're trying your very hardest, it's really not always in your control how much skin you end up with at the end of the day. Now let's see while Mia goes again, eyes up the crimp. Better that time, almost held it. <laughs> Sticking out her tongue as she walks back. A boulder like this, it's always interesting to try and manage your time because obviously this first move is quite physical and difficult. So you want to make sure that you're resting enough. But given that it's the first move, it means you can kind of give a few more attempts just back to back to back. So we'll see what her method is there. She seems to be doing a good balance of brushing the holds in between attempts, but also giving it as many quality burns as she can. Okay, the idea is to catch with the left hand underneath. You can see the right hand, the left hand comes through. It's what she keeps missing. She's touched it a few times, but not really getting solid contact in there yet. Blow out of the cheeks there. She's got a minute 11 on the clock. They have to complete the boulder within that time. Even if they're a second over it, it won't count. So they do have to keep an eye on it. She keeps looking right where there's a clock that the athletes can see. Yeah, and usually you're looking at that clock to make sure that you have enough time to get to the finishing hold. But also, sometimes there comes a time where athletes are counting down the time and making sure that they're having enough time just to get to the zone. Um, oh, slightly missed out that time. Too far to the right. Probably her worst go on it. And now starting to look a little bit frustrated. Checks the clock again, 35 seconds. See. Sometimes it's tough with a move like this when you try it and your first go feels kind of close and you look over and you have three minutes left on the clock. You can feel pretty confident in yourself and then all of a sudden you look over again and it's 30 seconds left. And you don't even know where that time went. Yeah, that sinking feeling as it clicks yeah. down. In a second we're gonna hear a buzzer indicate the last couple of seconds but I think she's going to call it a day before that the athletes can leave at any point and she does as the clock ticks down and Mia Crample no zone no top for her next up Ayala Kadem 
from Israel. He's psyched to be back in the final. I went into isolation area just to uh, check a few things. She's looking very relaxed, just hanging out, chilling. And she has this, I watched her in the semi-final because in the past she seemed to be quite hard on herself. And she took these moments during the semi-final where she composed herself, took a breath and continued. And it's a real progression, I think, for her. So yeah, she's really looking like such a veteran this season. Well, there we go, straight away into that crib. Slightly different beta than Mia there, taking her foot out of the toe hook seemed to really help with this tricky first move. Right. She'll get the zone now. Look on the bottom left of your screen. The bar gets filled up halfway uh, with yellow for a zone. It will get filled fully up for a top. And the next move is super slopey. Oh. Wow. Really hearing how hard she hit that volume with the microphone behind the wall there. Yeah, it's certainly popping in our ears. I don't know if you can hear that at home. So let's have a look at this again. Now the chalk underneath that hold, uh, it's there from the previous round. So the athletes probably won't touch that. And the right foot on that dual tech, that no tech surface, you can see it's slipping there. Yeah. She was applying a lot of force through that upper sloper though. We could hear that in the way that she latched onto it. It's fun to watch all the athletes climb such powerful boulders. I think that's what I enjoy most. And getting to watch just that pure like grit training pay off when you're just squeezing and holding holds as hard as you can. It's nice that we get to see that on this boulder. Yeah, Miho Nanaka apparently said that she wanted it so hard that it felt like being punched in the face. That was a, a quote from her friend, so it is the truth. But it shows what they want out there. You know, they want to be challenged. Into the zone once again. Doesn't get any more points for this. She's already been given the zone, so now it's all about the top. ready for this pop as she slaps it turning that hand into a, into a pinch yeah these holds are hard to read sometimes because you can grab them in multiple directions so good on her for exploring the options up there oh now missed the sloper went all the way to the top unique beater i'm not sure that's the right beater maybe not correct but it's always great to see athletes trying new things and not getting stuck in just one method it really can pay off and now she knows that maybe that that's not something she's going to try again and she probably gained more from trying that than failing at the same method she tried before but maybe that this attempt will guide her back towards the method she tried on her first attempt but only time will see yeah and that right i was watching that right foot because a bigger move like that means you've got to put more pressure through that right foot and you saw it slip again yeah, there really isn't too much of a trick when it comes to standing on top of a dual texture hold like that. Applying pressure can sometimes help, but it's so slippery that it's really just a little bit of luck sometimes. Absolutely. It's a kind of a love or hate it surface, and I know some of the athletes do hate it. Uh, and I, I know what they mean. It can be tricky when you stand on it. It's frustrating when you're slipping off something when it's not to do with strength, but it is testing for them. She's going to, oh, goes for the slap this time. For a second, I thought she was going for the big pop again, but seemed to sort of change her mind mid-move. But she will jump to the top of the scoreboard, preliminary, with that uh, zone. Sent the other way by the judges. There is obviously a microphone literally behind that sloop where you can hear the brushes. Let's watch this last attempt. Right hand. Difficult to get through it because you obviously want that right hand to be over the other side of it so you can match with the left. So, Anon Matsufuchi enters the stage. This is her fifth Boulder World Cup. She made her first final last year in Brixen. And she's really showing us her potential here already at this first World Cup of the season. And I think perhaps more than any other nation, it's so important for the Japanese athletes to do that. This is an Olympic selection year, places are limited, and the Japanese team is strong. But look at that move straight away in. Changing it into a pinch. Left foot on that starting crimp, and then a high left foot. Wow. 
slapping away at the hold and giving a bit of a grimace down to the uh, to her coaches, presumably. It seemed like she had the right idea with that high foot, but those slopers just look so unforgiving. They might be losing a little bit more than just finger skin on that. You really have to get your forearms involved. Yeah, we've seen a few scrapes. Uh, Jessie Pilt's got picked up a big old scrape in the semi-final. Kind of looked away, looked back, and she had this massive burn mark on her left arm. It's one of those things I don't think people realize necessarily about the level of this sport. Like, you guys come away with bumps, bruises, scrapes, everything between rounds. It's a physical sport. It's a super physical sport. And when you're in a competition like this, you just have so much adrenaline that you're really willing to do anything to get to the top of a boulder. So you're not really too concerned about how many scrapes you end up walking away with. But it can be pretty brutal. The one thing that athletes have to be aware of, though, is if they start to bleed, whether it's from their fingertips or anywhere else, they need to take care of that during their time. So when fighting with such big fiberglass volumes like this, they need to have that in mind. Misses the swing this time, comes down fairly hard. She's OK, though. Yeah, we're seeing more and more big moves. And sorry, there is Miho Nanaka in the audience. She will be disappointed not to climb in the finals. And she came pretty close to yeah. getting into it. There are a few faces that were definitely finals familiars that were not able to make it through this semi-final round. But we even saw the same after the qualification round yesterday. We saw some athletes who you maybe would say were favorites for the semi-finals not able to make it through just a, with a new world cup season it's going to be really interesting to see who rises to the top this year absolutely and we're seeing so many debutants this year and this is impressive stuff from Anon. she's already got the zone a minute on the clock high left foot once more left hand through oh i was watching that right hand unlocking that right hand and making the slap it's a big swing to hold on the slope of that bad. It really is. And there's just not one given technique that's going to help you stick onto something like that. Generally, if you can get your hips under a sloper, it's a little bit easier to then weight it. But there's no given rule, no given method that really will help you stick to giant fiberglass volumes. <laughs> yeah, if there is, I want it. Right. Up again. Oh, missing the crimp. Could be getting a bit burnt out here. Has the zone, yeah, decides to finish that. So, I didn't keep... That has jumped her to the top of the leaderboard provisionally due to attempts. Oh, that was the fall. Uh, it's kind of instinctual, I guess, when you're falling from that height. Yeah, it is interesting that falling is such a skill and most of us have been climbing for so long you really do tend to learn how to do it pretty well but in competitions I think you can also see some more gnarly falls than you would generally see um, just when athletes are trying really hard you're a little bit more prone to landing on your face sometimes. <laughs> well let's hope that doesn't happen as Brooke uh, looks back up the boulder. You said she wanted a jump. There's a jump coming up, but this is also kind of a jump. So she's got double jumps going on in this final. Yeah, she's definitely one of the shorter athletes pretty much always in any given field. And so she's been working hard on her power, both in the arms, but in the legs too, because that's such an important part of climbing in general, but also competition style. Yeah, she chalked up there mid swing, which is cool to see. All right, left hand slapping away, right hand up. Much better now from Brooke. Cuts loose briefly, but then gets the left foot engaged. Reaches up to the top, needs to match it. Double high heels from Brooke Rabadou. Such a classic Brooke move, that. That was such a pleasure to watch. She is just so strong and really, really capable of burling through powerful stuff like this. And I'm glad that we got to see that here. So this was it again, this replay, drilling that right foot into the crimp. And then this move made the sloper look like no problem. One hand on the top and then the double heels. Insane flexibility. Such a flexible climber. Yeah, it's very cool to watch. Or even in this case, just find a stable position to match a finish hold. 
So Ji Lu Lo from China comes out. Now last year, because she come out of nowhere, I went to talk to her coaches and they told me in Innsbruck that they, they actually didn't know how good she'd be because she hadn't competed against the world's best. So it's cool to see her out there on the stage and a big swing to start off with. Yeah, only 17 years old. And so due to the pandemic, she kind of missed those beginning years where she would have been able to compete on the senior scene. And her debut event in Brixton last year, she was able to make the final and then get herself onto the podium. So right from the beginning, she's had a really impressive career. So she gets a right hand on the sloper, needs to match it, looking down at her feet, gets the foot on the door, oh, no, big slip with the right spinning in the air with the feet. It's interestingly interesting and a bit worrying that this was, according to the root setters, by far the easiest boulder. Only Brooke has done it so far, we're nearing the end. Yeah, it will for sure make the rest of the final a bit spicier, but you never really know. It's so hard to tell who is going to do well on what style, and I think we have a pretty wide variety of style, and so Maybe even though the root setters predicted this one to be a bit easier, we'll see more tops spread out through the final. And it is always fun to see all the boulders get done, but by different athletes. Um, and I think we might be seeing a bit of that in this final. I mean, that four boulders are very different styles. So that does make sense. It will suit different athletes' abilities. So we'll find out. And I don't personally think that there's anything wrong with having a hard round. Um, even if the root setters were expecting more people to do this boulder, it is really just fun to watch the athletes fight and try their hardest. So it's fun to see four tops sometimes, but it's also really fun to just see people trying super hard and doing what they love. And I think we've been able to see that already on this boulder. Some good fights up there. Yeah, absolutely. Everything being left behind on this skin intensive climb. So Gilou looks up once more, very composed whenever she's on the mat. Very rarely allows herself a smile. You see it every now and again, but it seems to kind of keep within herself. That's her way of focusing. Right, right foot on the jib. Brings the left under straight to the pinch. Swaps feet with the toe. And now wait for this big bang as she flips around the hands, trying different things, swaps the feet back. Oh, and then she does use the underclip. Then slaps up. So much experimentation went on there. Yeah, it's always a tough call when you're in a position where you have a little bit of wiggle room. She seemed to be pretty comfortable there, but it doesn't always pay off to test out a bunch of different methods. Sometimes it's really best if you can try and pick something right off the bat and give it your all. She definitely wasted a little bit of energy just figuring out what she wanted to do up there. And the thing is, she went back and forth and kind of stuck to the same method. So at least she knows, but she's only got 32 seconds on the clock now. Yeah, hopefully she gained some good information. And there is enough time left for her to get to the top of this boulder. She just may need to move a little bit faster. Falls again, 19 seconds. That could be it for her, and it is. And that moves her up to second position due to attempts to that zone. If I was to predict, which is a terribly dangerous thing to do, I would have said the fight might be between, between Hannah and Brooke in terms of experience and what they're good at. So let's see how Hannah performs. Now, Hannah is wearing a black band on her left arm and in her hair. That is in memory of Christoph Schweiger part of the German team who sadly was killed very recently. And there will be a moment of silence tomorrow during the men's final for that, but I just wanted to mention it so you know what Hannah is representing out there on the stage. And of course, our thoughts are with Christoph's family. So, left toe for Hannah. Goes to the crimp and immediately matches in with the hands. It's often easier to hold something when you have two hands on it, but it's not always easy to get both of them there. So it was cool to see her be decisive at getting both hands to that crimp, making it look definitely a little bit easier than some of the other athletes. Hannah bringing the foot up, walking her way up, bumping and makes this match. Now this is where Brooke did the double heels. What can Hannah find? She's looking for an option. 
has a toe hook and a match. Well, that was a flash for Hannah. And that means she jumps to the top of the leaderboard. Brooke taking two attempts, Hannah just taking one. Ooh. I think it became very clear watching Hannah last year in the two bouldering finals that she participated in that she really can perform so well under the finals pressure. I mean, she looks good in every round of climbing that she participates in, but it was clear in Brixton and Innsbruck last year that she can really do something special. That's our scoreboard at the moment after bolder number one. Hannah Moyle leading the way, followed by Brooke Tapatu, and then Jilu Lau after that. And on Matsufuji, Mihaela Karem and Mia Krampel. Mia the only one not to get the zone on that boulder. She'll have a bit of work to do on boulder number two. See that in a minute. Well, let's have a look. Let's get to see it now. Let's have a look at this. So, Quinn, tell me about this start. A bit of a swing. Yeah, the athletes have to put four points of contact on that volume there. So that means we'll see them just kind of bring their feet up and tap that volume. And then it's just a big swing move with that probably left a lot of questions in the athlete's mind after the preview. You can kind of identify the basic type of movement, but it's really hard to know exactly what you're going to want to do and what it's going to feel like when you're actually on that climb. And then the end of this boulder, too, is another big jump. And so I would call this boulder pretty risky. More attempts on it is generally ideal, but if you fall after you get the zone, then you run the risk of not being able to do the move to the zone again. Yeah, it is a dangerous spot. We say risky, we don't mean for their health, we mean in terms of climbing that boulder. Yes. Now there's two ways. There's this method facing, and you can do it backwards, if that makes sense, or turning the other way and then spinning in the air. Which the physics of that blows my mind, but I'm sure someone will do it at some point. Because the hold is actually sort of turned to work that way, so facing away from the boulder. It's so easy to get a little bit disoriented when you're swinging on a hold like this, and so I'm sure we'll see a lot of the athletes take an attempt to figure it out, take a few attempts potentially to figure it out. Yeah, and of course there's not a right or a wrong way, it's just there's different methods. Mia getting the swing, super high with the hips, wants to drop down. This is that whole, there's so much body tension required in this. It's one of those moves I see in the gym if I'm climbing and I walk away from it because I don't like doing moves like that. It's quite new school, I guess, in terms of like that dynamic approach. Yeah, definitely. And it's not something that you often get to climb on. I think there are very few gyms in the world that would set something like this. And so it's not something that athletes are always going to be super practiced on. And depending on where an athlete is from and where they're training, they may have like less access to these really coordination style moves. Oh, Mia at the moment is trying to figure this sequence out. Look how high she gets with those feet almost onto the zone and it shows how hard the boulder is the fact that the zone is actually the first move it's a real st uh, sticker of a move that's not a word is it you know what i mean it's a stop stop a move that's what i'm trying to say yeah where the zone is on a boulder can give the athletes a good bit of information about how hard it is in what areas um, the zone being pretty much right in the middle of this boulder shows the athlete that it's really just two hard moves all right, here she goes again. One minute 30 at the clock, so she has got time much closer. And we talk about sort of muscle memory. Sometimes moves like this, you need to do it a few times. Yeah, it can really, you can really learn so much. Um, whether it's conscious or not, you just, once you've tried it a few times, your body will kind of instinctually start to do a better method. And hopefully, you'll gain enough muscle memory that if you fall on the next bit and you need to do this beginning move again, you will have learned enough to be able to execute it again. Came close, just missed the right hand. It's not a comfortable position to land in there. You really are going to have to create a lot of opposition between your hands and your foot pushing on that volume in order to be able to stop. Yeah, it's one thing sort of jumping into a flat surface. I mean, it's, it's almost horizontal, that hold. You know, it's really difficult to hit and of course every swing is costing her a little bit of energy every time and quite 
bicepy move. Once you hit that zone, you've got to, the contact strength required to hold it is, is tough. Definitely. And we saw her almost come into that lower black volume on one of her closer attempts. It seems like it's pretty hard to keep your momentum from swinging you off of the wall there. She goes again onto the zone. Now it's, it's a good opportunity to say that if you touch the zone, you don't get awarded the zone. You've got to use it. You've got to move from a control position to a control position. And just doing what she did and slapping it, that's not enough to get the points. Yeah, you're right. No score yet for Mia Crumple. So you'll have some time backstage to think about this. Ayala Karem. She lays the towel down. That's just to stop chalk and dirt getting onto the bottom of the climbing shoes, which is what you don't want, obviously. So she just puts that there as just another layer of protection. And we're going to see her try the same method as Mia, having her hips facing the zone, which, according to the root setters, will work. But we might see athletes try starting the swing with their hips facing away from the zone and then kind of turning them towards it mid-air. Uh, supposed to be the easier method to do this boulder. Yeah, yeah, they're taking a little tumble there, rolling backwards. And she's ha <laughs> having a look at this now, so they're trying to get this set in her mind. And you can see how awkward it is that the forearm's kind of backwards and it's not a jug in that direction necessarily, even though it looks like it. And she's stopping herself, having a think about it. That will have cost her a bit, but she didn't have the swing she wanted. Two minutes, 42. What was that? I'm sure when the athletes came out to preview this video, or this route here, they recognized the move right away. Um, it's kind of become a classic move to do something like this. They had something similar in the semifinal. And sometimes it's hard when you know right away what you think is the correct method. It's really hard to then create some changes that will help you stick the move. Yeah, I kind of want a trajectory drawn on screen with a swing to see all the differences between them. But it, it's very similar at the moment between Mia and Ayala, the way they're swinging. And then that drop, Ayala getting a little bit closer though, sticking that right hand for just a second before she fell. Better than that. Her falls are amazing. They're as good as the jump. Spinning as she lands, trying to cushion herself. Oh, that's how close it was. And that barn door, the way her body's going, kicking with the leg into that hold is going to prevent that, but easier said than done. does it this time she's still got another jump to go tries to reset she's got to drive from so low to so high so much to go through the legs here oh. it's meant to be like a double clutch move so you, you go or a paddle move uh, where you go up and you hit that first hold and you use that to springboard onto the next few Problem is, is that's another learned move, and she's only just learned the first one, and she's only got 47 seconds left. Yes, yeah, such a tricky boulder to only have four minutes for. It's crazy how big of a difference it can feel to have five minutes than to only four. Uh, so these athletes really have to execute here in the final. But Ayala showing us that she's very capable of learning movement and getting it dialed. Absolutely. Well, here she goes again. Could be one of our last tries on this with 20 seconds to go. Big spring from down low. Choosing to have her left foot not on that black volume. I wonder if that may be a key aspect into getting enough power. Looks like an outrageously long... I mean, it is an outrageous. It's a body length up there. Almost trying to sort of static it in there, but I mean... It's one of those boulders, I look at it and I just, I cannot see the way through that. It's such a long way. And sometimes when you actually begin to stand up towards a jump like that, all of a sudden it seems way more doable, but when you let that doubt creep into your mind, it's a tough position to be in. 
Yeah, it's a very good point. Like the mental game that goes on in these competitions is half the fight, really. Because if you were in a normal, you know, these these athletes would probably be able to do a climb like this, given time, given space. But with all the pressure and the mind games, it becomes way more difficult. And I'm sure if it takes you a few attempts to stick this zone here, as soon as you're on it and you're lining up that next move, you've got to be thinking about if you don't do the next move that you've got to do that start move again. And that can be a pretty scary thought if it felt difficult for you in the first place. Absolutely. Well, Anon faces, first time we've seen this, faces the other direction to try to get the swing. And let's see now if this works. Looking back over her shoulder. Well, it does work. It does indeed work. It's definitely an easier position to gain momentum from. It just looks a bit more natural, but then I'm sure it feels a bit daunting to not be able to see your target hold. You can almost see the cogs turning in her head there as she has a look. We're trying to figure out which one did feel easy. But of course, she's done it once. Maybe she won't have to look quite as much if she does it again. The fact she's taking some time here might show that she feels confident on this. Same kind of method as before, looking ever closer to it. That black volume there is just a little bit off balance for the athletes, making it hard for them to stop with a foot on it. And instead they're having to paste that right foot onto the yellow volume that's underneath it. Right, rotates again, gets it this time. Right, so now she has to set herself up. Left foot down low. Oh, that looks like a better position. And it's what you were saying about the foot, way better positioning there. Yeah, it definitely looks uncomfortable, but those feet are both so high, and so you're not really able to push off of them until you start pulling with your hands. And then it's all about timing those explosive movements so that they're happening and helping each other out. This has been a really interesting boulder to watch because you often see the athletes learn how to do a move, but it's been so clear with Anon that she's kind of figuring it out and the process of how she figures it out. Yeah, that, there's something really great and simple about a boulder like this that has just really two moves to it and both of them have such a learning curve to them. It's a fun skill to see tested in the athletes. Well, she's going to go again with 52 seconds on the clock. Starts this swing, facing backwards. No look with the head this time. Just a little glance now as she twists. Catching the foot, but not quite sticking it. So she'll chalk up and go again. Get massive support, as you'd expect, from her home crowd. And on a boulder like this, you really don't need too long to get to the top. Both of these moves are pretty fast. So she's looking to be in a good position to get this done here. All right, this could be her last chance. Sets herself up. Oh. Close. All right, well, interesting stuff with three athletes gone. Three to go. It just looks so bizarre, that swing. And then the spin in the air. Someone capture a slow motion of that. I want to see that spin. And in this paddle move, it looks quite difficult to just get some momentum off that first hold. That first hold that you jump to is not good at all. Um, but there's still, we'll see the athletes use it a lot in order to generate towards that next hold. So, Brooke Rabatou, as she came out on the stage there, the smile on your face was awesome to see. She wanted a jump, she's getting a jump, and she's immediately starting with this different method of doing it. Oh. First time you said she'd be practicing, clearly she has. Oh, so close to a flash for Brooke. She has some really fun focus right now. You can just see it in her eyes. She came out and almost immediately pulled onto this boulder and just executed that first move with so much authority and was looking really close on this next jump as well. I think the closest we've seen. 
think authority is the right word. She isn't looking in any way intimidated, whereas everyone else has seemed a little bit nervous coming into it. Yeah, and on this boulder in particular, I think that's a super important place to be. You can't really take too much time to ask questions. You really just have to try your best to execute and get it done. Team USA sitting there. Josh Larson with the white tee on. Brooke starts the swing again. And again, that swing, it's so strange. She's almost kind of spinning in the air as she lands it once more. Oh, trying to stop on that second to last hold. She asked for a brush, so we flick back to Josh. I messaged him earlier saying he had the brilliant uh, sneaker game. He's wearing some brilliant <laughs> trainers down there on the front. If we get a chance to see him. Looking sharp there, Josh. I'm sure he'll <laughs> love to play back the stream and hear that. <laughs> I hope so. Or he'll kill me later on, we'll find out. Right, so Brooke takes a moment here as the clock ticks towards two minutes. Has a look. You're right about that focus. She's just locked in on that final hold. This boulder is an interesting one in terms of time management. It's really hard to tell how much it's taking out of you physically. Sometimes you'll feel like it's not taking much out of you, but it, in reality it, it can be. And because it's such a short boulder, you can give it a lot of attempts. And there is a lot to learn, so sometimes that is a good method. All right, here she goes again. Drives upwards, oh, touching the last hole with the right hand. Oh, this is exciting stuff here. So this was the drive through, and then one hand on that final hold. It's not a gimme either. It's not a huge sinker jug like you'd want it to be. No, and you can see her with each attempt taking back a little bit more information and adjusting. We haven't seen her regress at all. Each attempt has been better than the last. So hopefully we can see her get it done. About 45 seconds left on the clock. About to say, she's quickly back into it, not really resting that long. Every time I shake my head in amazement when she does that, really cool to see. Right, here she goes. Oh, closer, look better on that second to last hold as she runs back to the chalk. The crowd really getting behind Brooke here. Everyone wants to see her get this. Lands it once more. Sets herself up again. Big spring with the right foot, but oh, finally I think the fatigue kicking in. Giving it absolutely everything there. So, Gilo Low comes out. We reset, calm ourselves down a little bit. She's starting facing towards the zone. Making it work, flagging that foot through to stop the swing. So interesting, totally different method from Brooke, but almost the same positioning. It just shows what we've been talking about. There's always other ways through these climbs. Yeah, and these athletes are really good at knowing what is going to be best for them. And we definitely saw Jilu act with the same authority that Brooke did just now. Yeah, true, actually. Yeah, No hesitation. Yeah. yeah. Well, second to last athlete out. Hannah Moyle still to go. Three minutes on the clock, and Jilu is currently sitting in third position with a zone on the first boulder. And now, of course, the zone on the second. Starting the swing, generating that momentum, driving herself towards the hold, and again that leg kicking through. Left foot on the jib, right foot on the sloper comes up. Similar. Almost seemed like she paused for too long on that first hold in the jump. She was able to like stand up really well to it, but wasn't able to keep the momentum going towards the finish hold there. Yeah, we get to see this here. 
this is a replay. Yeah, you're right. Just kind of stopped on it a little bit. But there's a lot to learn from something like that. I'm actually probably sure that she did that on purpose and just testing that position, seeing how much she could kind of stop there and then regenerate. But it seems like that first hold that you're jumping to isn't quite pause enough to do that. I think you really need to be jumping past it and then just using it along the way to help you get towards that finish hold. All right, here we go again, a minute 40. Almost touching the volume with her feet. Looking cleaner and cleaner every time she does that swing. Oh, almost skipping, or well, did perhaps skip the second hold. It's interesting, when we watched uh, Mia on it and she kind of looked up and it looked such a long way and then we switched to this and it suddenly doesn't look so far. Yeah, once the athletes are stood up on this foothold that they're jumping off of, they're actually pretty much reaching the first hold uh, before their foot has left. So even though it looks like such a big and daunting move, it is maybe a bit smaller than it seems, although it still requires so much power and timing and coordination to execute it. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't look like she's running out of power yet. She makes it clean once again. Just to let you know the kind of atmosphere that what's in the stadium here. There's a line of kids on our left-hand side with binoculars screaming Gamba at the stage. It's so cool. They're about four years old. Such an incredible crowd here. I really love how much they're really cheering for every athlete. Ooh, kicks the wall there as she came through, and that is the end. Hannah Moyle, if she gets the zone, will jump ahead of Brooke at this stage. With a boulder like this, when you see so many athletes get close but not quite able to finish it off, it gets really exciting because you just start to really want to see the boulder get done. Um, and Hannah's our last athlete that will have the opportunity to do that. So I'm excited to see it. Absolutely. I kind of feel like I'm invested so much into this emotionally. I need someone to finish the thing. Yeah, this is such a fun boulder to watch as a spectator. Hannah with an interesting arc there, kind of came a bit too high and it dropped a bit low on it. Just takes a second to compose herself, nodding along to the music there a bit, sort of giving herself a talking to. Love watching Hannah climb. You, you can sort of see again the, the, the process in her head, what she's thinking in any given moment is great. Right, starts this swing. Let's see if she tweaks the trajectory slightly. Throws herself out. Much better from Hannah. Takes a moment to chalk up on this good zone hold. Now the right foot. Now part two to this climb is coming up. Oh, she changes the feet. Goes very low. Hannah just learning on the job here a little bit. Almost trying to go statically into it to span that reach. Yeah, just testing out that position, trying to see what it feels like. Maybe not the highest of quality in that attempt, but she definitely learned something about what it feels like once you rock over that foot. Yeah, I think you're right. It looks a little bit messy at the moment, but I think she's going to start to pull it all together and look smoother and smoother through those moves. Yeah, she wasn't necessarily going for the top on that attempt, but now she will have that information and know that it maybe feels a little bit nicer once you pull over that foot. Here she goes with the swing, drops in. Ooh. Yeah, there's kind of a flick she's doing at the last moment. It sort of sends her into a bit of a weird jump. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, the athletes that found the swing position with their hips facing away from the zone to start, seem to be a bit more comfortable. We know that this method works, but it just doesn't look quite as natural. It's almost like she has to kind of avoid hitting her head as she comes through. She's kind of curving herself around that hold and that's causing that flick. We saw it there in that slow motion. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. 
And I guess she is. I mean, look, she's right over the other side of the volume. Right, let's see if she has learned something. Quickly chalks up. Sets up with the right foot immediately. Yeah, much closer, but time is ticking away. There is Alex Kazanov from his Team Israel, one of uh, Ayala Karem's coaches. And an athlete himself. Absolutely. A World Cup winner at that. And a good commentator as well. It's a while since he's been in the box with me, but he always brings good insights when he comes. A well-rounded individual. Indeed. Right, Hannah again, shake it out with the right hand. Resting on this, using a bit of that lead technique. Oh, missed the right foot that time. Okay, well, she will maintain her position at the top of the leaderboard with the zone. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Look, the two have got two tops, but everyone else apart from me has got zone. So if anyone gets a top and someone doesn't, things could change so quickly here. Mentally, how do you return from something like that? How will Natalia get ready for the next World Cup? I think she'll be able to leave this one behind her. And it's been... She's made a lot of finals in a row. Uh, making Not making one final definitely hurts, but I think sometimes it can release a little bit of pressure. So maybe we'll see that in the rest of the season. She's kind of gotten maybe a bad comp out of the way, I would hope. Yeah, like first first day back at school, jitters perhaps exactly. gone now. And she can yes. sort of get rid of that and move on. And it's quite a dynamic, slabby first move, this one. We'll be able to check out Mia as she uh, has a look. Talk to me about the, the the holds that are kind of bolted on to the volumes on the left-hand side. Not something for the athlete's hands, you can see there on the screen. Yeah, those are put there just to prevent athletes from trying to grab the edge of the volume where it comes and meets the wall. Um, even though these volumes are screwed in and they're manufactured to be pretty seamless, there can be a little bit of an edge or a crack between the volume and the wall. and. Uh, these athletes have really strong fingers and are willing to do absolutely anything to get to the top So those little holds are put there to prevent the athletes from doing that It's kind of insane that when you consider that's what they're there for and then you think how small that crimp is It's real nail stuff Mia going towards the black hole now according to the root setters doing what she just did there, kind of jumping towards that sloper is almost the wrong way to do it You want to palm down onto the blue volume, but it's not obvious when you look at it Yes, definitely not. And it's not a comfortable position to try and jump out of either. You have your foot above your hands, which makes it really hard to generate your hips into a stable position. There's a lot of foot movements that go on in this and quick foot movements. Some slabs we see very gradual, gentle foot movements. This is not one of those. Definitely not. It's similar principles to some slow, slower slabs and that you have to really drop your heels and balance on these volumes, but you're not getting to those positions in a stable way, which makes it a lot more challenging. All right, so Mia goes again. Springing up with that right foot. The tough thing about a problem like this is that there are so many small things that you can change in order to help you do better and it's really hard to recognize what it is that you're doing wrong and what you might want to readjust before trying again. Yeah, I think that's a really good point actually because although the coaches are sat down at the front, you, the coaches can't give advice, can they? They can't tell them what to do. No, you really just have to be able to think through it and it sometimes being able to watch yourself back on videos and training is a useful way to learn, but right now you only have four minutes and it's just you up there, and so it's just going through things in your head. That looked a lot better. Yeah, way more stable. You saw the shot from the side. Her hips were really far back the time before and a little bit closer to the wall on that one. And Mia does need to get something here, sitting in sick with no zones or tops at the moment. Yeah, even just getting a zone here would help her be a little bit more in the rankings going into the last boulder. Um, but it would be tough to walk away without points from this boulder as well. 
Yeah, mentally tough as well for her. She starting, might start to get a bit more frustrated. You saw her there pre almost pressing her face into the wall, which seems dangerous, but that's the idea, isn't it? You want to be as close to the wall as possible. Yeah, you really do. It's We saw her hips come out there, and it's just pretty easy to see from that angle that we were at. If your hips are out past where your feet are on those volumes, you don't have much of a chance of balancing in there. So here Mia goes again. Ooh, slightly slower and actually looked a bit better. Yeah, speed is a big thing that you can really adjust and play around with on a boulder like this. Oh, there we go. Slower does work as she comes over, but she's only got three seconds. I've forgotten about the clock, but she does get the zone. And that's what she would have wanted at least at this boulder. She's on the scoreboard. Definitely seeing some frustration maybe in Mia's face there. She made it look so easy on that last attempt, not saying that it was at all, but I'm sure that that was a frustrating feeling to kind of unlock the method right at the end of your time there. Right, Ayala Karem comes out. I was concerned about the stadium being a bit too hot, but I mean, certainly where we're sitting, and I do appreciate we're right by an air conditioning unit, but it does feel like a good temp at the moment in here, not too humid. It's nice to have an indoor facility. Uh, we'll see some World Cups take place outdoors this year, a lot of them actually, and that's where you can really see the temperature start to come into play. But luckily we have a slightly more controlled climate for the athletes this time. Yeah, that's a very good point because hot and humid countries do not make for easy climbing. So Ayala Karem, ooh, quick with the feet. See if she changes that up to Mia's method. Mia a little bit slower coming into that, but looking really good there. Spinning back down and landing. Looking up at trying to figure it out, locking in where she puts her feet exactly on the volumes. Oh, really good balance. So two minutes 50, she's in the same position as Mia was with three seconds to go. Yeah, she has a little bit more time to figure out this next bit. It's really nice to not have to rush on a slab like this. Right, into the zone hold, crimping it with the right hand. You can see her squeezing there with her feet on those two volumes, creating as much opposition as she can. Using all of her palm there, trying to get as much skin as possible, looking down at her feet. If you want to see something really fascinating, go back and watch Mia Cramble's semi-final slab because she spent about two and a half minutes or something on the wall. Every move was super precise from her. Very interesting to watch. And I bring that up just because this is such a different kind of a slab climb. And yet on the same section of wall. Yeah, what's cool about this slab climb is that it goes from kind of a quicker beginning and then you really have to slow it down, which can be difficult at times when you get your heart rate up on a powerful move like this to then completely switch modes and watch your breathing and be careful with your foot placements. It's not an easy change to make. No, it's really not. In that transition, Ayala, I think, struggling a little bit with now. Up she goes, a little bobble with the feet, and it's got to be annoying because she came so close to the top and then can't seem to come back to it. And that, that feeling when you unsend a climb almost, you start going backwards, it can be very difficult to pull yourself out of that mindset. Yeah, I think slabs can be some of the most mentally challenging for that reason. They're just so delicate. There she goes. Oh. <laughs> You can see, it's almost like a clutch on a car, the biting point, the balancing point where she fell. <laughs> 45 seconds to go, it takes a deep breath. There she goes. So she stood up, she has got time for this, and she knows this movement, so she'll be a little bit quicker. That's what she's standing on. It looks better than it actually is. <sighs> yeah, it's just that, that 
balance, isn't it, coming through? And I think with 15 seconds, she is going to call it. Put three zones out of three. So, Anon enters the arena. It's going to be really interesting to see what she does with this on the first hold. It's taken a while to look at it. It's been a while since they've seen these holds. Of course, they inspected it at the beginning of this broadcast, but that was a while back. Up with the pop, swinging with the arms. With a good first attempt from her. We haven't seen many moves that are easy to flash in this round. Um, I mean, that being said, we have seen some flashes of difficult moves, but definitely some learning required. Yeah, it's a real head scratcher of the finals, this one. Better this time as she starts to trust that right, using all of her body then pressed into the wall. The friction from anywhere if you can. Now palming down with the left, that's what she's standing on. Super interesting slab climbing. Now gets the right foot up. Wow, this is quite an interesting position. Very different from what we saw Ayala trying to do. But it seems to be working. Well, it just allows her to palm down now, but she's going to have to drop that right foot unless she's going to pull up, which she is. But This right volume that she's trying to palm on really does not come out very far from the wall. And so it's not easy to put much pressure through it. Almost loses it, toe hooks her way onto that slope. There's nothing to toe hook on there, but it's just allowing her to be stable. Now brings the left up, it's got a trust and the hand comes off. That Gaston style moves so awkward from that position. Yeah, the zone hold is not very positive and these big 360 fiberglass circles, while they help you climb through this route, they also make the wall stick out a bit in certain places, which can make it harder to balance. So it's hard to navigate moving your body around those shapes and trying to use them to progress through this boulder. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see if she changes things up there and does something different, because that did take her quite a while. But she will have learned from it. It will be quicker this second time. Third time, I should say. Sometimes it's so hard to take away the right things from a, an attempt on a slab like this because these holds have such a large surface in which you can use them. It's hard to remember exactly what you've done and the smallest little change in position can make the biggest difference. Oh, nearly loses it, keeps it together. And then this is this walk over to the right as the minute buzzer sounds. Similar kind of idea, pressing with that left. Oh, that was so close to being... If she just kept that left foot on, she would have been in a really good position for that next series of moves. 45 seconds on the clock. Let's have a look at this. This is the feet. Nearly got it, you can see. Just bumping it, holding for a second. Spinning back and down. She's really learned how to do this first move quite nicely. Yeah, looking very solid now. Comes into that zone. Will she use that same feet method? Trying to find it. Sticks it for a longer, but with 11 seconds, that's going to be it. So another zone. Still no top on this boulder. Not many tops in this entire round. Only two so far in this competition. All right, Brooke was so good on the jump. What can she do on the slab? Lots of different climbs here as we go for that big swing, that coordination move into a slab climb. Right, she gets on. Now, just a little fact for you. If you were thinking, why aren't they sort of mantling up onto here? Uh, we'll stick with Brooke and she makes this first move, flicks her hair around. Real concentration. She looks down at her feet. Oh, 
Wow, adding a little bit of risk there, but making it work really nicely. Loving how confident Brooks looking here tonight, like just enjoying every second of this. Tries to get the left foot up as she falls and asks for a brush. Yeah, so as we look at the brush, I've been told by one of the root setters that they took a bit of sandpaper to where her right foot is just to skim off a bit of the surface to reduce the chances of an athlete rocking up on that, which sort of shows the level of minutia that goes on with root setters sometimes. It's becoming more and more difficult to separate such a talented field of athletes, and so they have to really pull out all the stops. Really good from Brooke as she gets stood up. Brooke climbing with a lot of purpose this evening. It's fun to watch in her movement. Right, maneuvers herself around that sloper. Now she's established in the zone. Spots the left quickly and now she'll want to drop the right on, but bobbles with the left foot. She'll want to palm down with the right hand. There it is, and now she's got to stand up towards the top. One move away. It's got to be that hold. It can't be the volume itself. She needs to match it, though, and does. All right, game on, then. Brooke with a quick top of Boulder 3. That gave me goosebumps. <laughs> this is going to be such an exciting fight all the way to the end. Oh, it really is. Don't go away for a second if you're watching this. Look at that strength there, up into the top, gets confirmation from the judges and a big smile on her face. Ji Lu Lao, who's out next. Over halfway through this bouldering final now, and we've only seen three tops total put on the board by just two of the athletes. So not the highest scoring of rounds, but that really doesn't matter too much in the end as long as the field is getting separated which it definitely is yeah i agree occasionally we get competitions where there aren't many tops and it does feel a bit flat this is not one of those comps like it's every move is exciting and yeah just fascinating stuff to watch right she spins down learning the sequence she's got two zones at the moment she needs to get a top here Ideally. Getting just one top means a lot in this round in particular. So, and I think that the athletes are aware of that. They'll know that not too many boulders have been topped. And it's kind of a nice feeling to know that you're really still in it. Sometimes you know that you've kind of lost your opportunity if it's a round where you need all four tops to be winning or on the podium but I'm sure the athletes are aware that that isn't the case here. And so everyone is still given a pretty equal opportunity to put themselves in a podium position. Yeah, that's a good point. You don't consider that sometimes when you're watching a competition of how the athletes are feeling themselves with that, but you're right, because when there's just loads of flashes, the pressure mounts up, you know you've got to flash it, and then it becomes a bit depressing perhaps if you're backstage, so yeah. So this is why we get athletes in the commentary box, is stuff like that, because it's such a good insight. I never would have considered that. Gilo, big slap on the wall, though, on that attempt. Framed by that spotlight, the shadow on the wall. It's interesting. We haven't actually seen too many slips like that on this volume, even though it's so low profile and not super high textured, as we've learned from the root setters, but every now and then it can just be by chance that your foot ends up slipping, but sometimes it really is in the skill of waiting and finding the right amount of pressure. Yeah, heels down as she has to stand up into that move, getting those hips close to the wall. Minute 25 on the clock, not got the zone yet. Right foot up again. Oh, another foot slip, this time with the right. Sometimes the skill of standing on volumes like this is something that certain athletes will find comes pretty naturally. And sometimes it's something that you really have to practice in order to learn what feels right. 
Yeah, she hasn't unlocked it yet, has she? It's sort of that moment hasn't clicked at the moment. This was a previous attempt to watch a replay. That was one where she didn't slip. She had a few moments. Let's see this time. Much better. It still looked a bit awkward, but somehow she stuck to the wall. Yeah, almost teetering off backwards there a little bit, but was able to drop her heels and settle into this position. Now she's creeping towards the zone, trying to navigate, having that big fiberglass hold right in your hips, kind of pushing you away from where you want to be. Oh, but she falls, and that will be it. Bad news for Jilulau. Good news for us, though, because Hannah Moyle is out, and the battle resumes for the top spot. It's a bit like a blind game of chess, isn't it? Like, <laughs> neither athlete knows what the other is doing. Have a vague idea, and yet all the pressure is on them. And Brooke is in the tough position of waiting, not knowing what Hannah's going to be able to do after Brooke finishes her time climbing, and Hannah's in the position of knowing probably what has happened. Although some athletes will choose to listen to music and kind of sit in a separate area of isolation if they would prefer not to really know what's happening. So we can't say for sure that they'll know what the other is doing, but there is a decent chance, I'd say. Yeah, let's see if it affects Hannah. She's had one go on this. Brooke did it in two. Pretty crazy considering no one else has managed to climb it. She did it in two attempts. Oh, that's a big slip from Hannah though. Trying to clean off that slab and, and the shoes while she's at it. Throws it <laughs> backwards. Take out a judge. I'm not sure that would help me score. <laughs> right, Hannah again. Oh, closer. With these volumes, because they're a bit lighter in color, it really gives you a good visual of where the rubber has been on them. You can, it's a little bit hard to tell, but you can see the general grayness where the athletes have been standing. Um, sometimes that can be helpful if you're later on to see where people have been standing, but also that can mean that the surface is getting a bit dirtier as more rubber and dust collects on it. But that's what brushes are for. So. <laughs> yeah, she's using it a lot, as we can see. Yeah, such an important part of climbing in general, but especially when it comes to slab climbing, when it's all about friction, you really want as much as you can get. Right, has she found a bit more? Has the brush done its work up with the right foot? Slower and better from Hannah. In fact, so good she can no hand that section. Harming now. She'll want to go slow again. Gets the right toe and creeps the left hand through to the zone hold. Hold your breath. If you're from Germany supporting Hannah, or if you just support Hannah, she's got the zone now. Careful with that left foot, almost knocking her own right foot up. Uses that high right foot. Looking comfortable at the moment. Oh! Bit of a mistake there. Tried to get the slope and went back to the crimp and then missed it. And this could be a turning point here in this competition. Of course, one more boulder to go, but this is going to put the ball in Brooks' court if Hannah can't send this. Hannah with a deep breath. She knows, we think, that Brooke has sent this. She knows what she needs to do. Oh, another big slip. Running back to get on as quick as she can. She's starting to run low on time here. And the thing is, the slow method worked for her. She needs to sort of like stop here, just take a moment. Oh, but forget what I said. <laughs> Does it quickly, makes it work. 17 seconds to go, she has to be quick now. No choice, 14, watch that clock. We're coming up to the 10 second mark and she falls and that is like, yeah, that's going to be it. So, we're waiting for confirmation of the scores on screen, but Hannah doesn't send, Brooke does. 
bit of a tennis match of a boulder finals this super exciting back and forth we go grits her teeth there she looks over let's check out the score Brooke Rabatou jumps to the top of the leaderboard two tops one zone Hannah Moyle slips down one with that one top missing that top on the slab just into second position Anon Matsufuchi in third position Ayala Karem Jilu Lau and Mia Krampel make up the rest of the field that third position on the podium is really going to be up for grabs on this last boulder it's seeming likely that Brooke or Hannah will stay in that first position but it's really hard to tell a top could get anyone on the podium at this point yeah and this is the boulder they have to do it on it's a power boulder was slightly changed but still physical moves when the athletes are tired ending on that top and there's some tricky sequences through here let's see Mia Crample hasn't had the comps you want so far one top one zone but a top would change everything for Mia it is really all to play for as we come into this final boulder yeah definitely frustrating not to score much on the first three boulders but that doesn't mean it's over and that's not always an easy thing to remember when you're out there as the athlete but I hope that she can at least give this a really good fight to finish off her round this evening so she swings in gets controlled in order to start goes with the left hand needs to bump now bit of a readjustment finds a super high heel doesn't bump but matches then brings the left up it might be a bit too str I thought it was a bump bump but it's very stretched out if you do do that your toes are going to be very low yeah, it does seem like you need to release that toe from the starting position there and we'll see or we're seeing it now with Mia a lot of tape on her fingertips these beginning holds in particular are very high friction and very easy to slip off of and so that means that you can lose a lot of skin very quickly so we'll see some of the athletes like Mia come out with tape already anticipating that um, and we may have to see some athletes stop during their round and add tape it's a bit of a strategy as to what you do if you come out with tape already um, knowing that maybe you'll have a little bit less friction but that way you don't run the risk of needing to waste your time on taping your fingers while you're out there i've heard some people say that they prefer to sort of work the boulder with tape on work out the sequence and then kind of take it off for that final send like forget the skin by that point exactly it's a lot easier to take tape off often than it is to put it on so it can be a wise decision to come out with your tips already taped and ready to go someone was telling me and i think it was molly thompson smith that she practices speed taping her fingers uh just in case that happens during a final again one of those things i'd never have considered you know like sitting in your room desperately taping up your fingers just in case you know right mia in with the double toes left hand matches still with the toes locked in she's really stretched out with those toes locked and I don't think she's really got the reach on it she shakes her head trying to work this out it's just a tough round for Mia Crample so tough to keep your head in it for such a long time too not only when you're out climbing but you have so much time behind the wall especially in a final and you really have to find a good mental space so bumps up with the left still with the toes in matches this is where she got to before maybe she'll go back to the heel method looked a bit more secure on that and that holds so if it was rotated 90 degrees it'd be way better but of course it's not it's more of a sloper but there is a possible pinch underneath as well you can bring the thumb into action yeah the third of those three flat hold volumes is jibbed with a small hold to make it better but it's also on the natural angle of that wall which makes it a little bit less positive than the previous two that are kind of kicked out because of that orange volume that they're attached to so she does switch back to the heel but falls backwards and with 14 seconds oh, she's gonna go again wants that zone 
a long way away. Eight seconds now, I think she's done. Looks at her fingers one last time. I think a good fight, a good battle for Mia Krampel. And of course, at the very beginning of the season, it's not really about winning the thing. It's just about getting ready. The World Championships is coming up in Bern. That's in a lot of athletes' heads. So their training might be structured differently to be able to perform at certain events. Um, trying to peak your physical performance at a certain time is a big part of the strategy and a lot of athletes will be looking towards like you said the world championships happening later this year yeah it is packed and do join us for the rest of the comps we're up to south korea next but right now here in japan our final boulder is ayala karim rocks up on the heel trying to put some pressure does make it work but slides down you might catch a glimpse of Mia waiting on the sofas on the left. She's finished the boulders, so she, there's nothing for her not to see. So now she gets to watch everyone else. On the left-hand side of the stage. So she's sitting in fourth position. Makes the bump, gets the heel in. Drops the left down, that heel a little bit better this time. Has a word with herself there as she looks up. Let's see that again. That heel was better set. She's kind of adjusted it in the last second, turned the toes slightly down, but still slides through. Giving that a real good brush there. Wants the heel to stick. All about sticking on this first bit of this boulder. You have to create so much tension through the hands and the heel or toe, whatever you choose to use. But impressive method there. Yeah, that campus style. I thought she was going to campus all the way through it for a moment. Seems like, yeah, you want the other hand there. That's how bad they are. Really good angle to show the slope. But for the first time, we see someone touching the zone. I think the campus might actually be the way forward on this. You know? Yeah, that was super interesting to see. Campusing often seems like it makes things harder but on really bad holds sometimes having your hips a little further out from the wall can be helpful uh, just so that you're not worrying about taking a toe hook or a heel hook out and then all of a sudden your hips swinging out there if you're campusing your hips have already started from that point and so you don't need to worry about gravity pulling them away from that prime position yeah good point so she's now in and on this boulder way better and now she can statically go up towards the next hold which is good if she can get there but it's a long way and a big jump into it we had a good look myself and Quinn at those holds from the zone onwards and they are good but body position changes things up somewhat yeah and they are definitely not as positive towards the ends um, the more you can work towards the middle of all of those shiny black volumes, the better they get. Um, and she wasn't able to really get towards the more in-cut portion of the hold. All right, she gets a shout of Gambit from the crowd. Up she goes again, using that campus, heel locked in still. A really tough transition from a heel to a toe there. You have so much pulling through that heel. It's not easy to switch it. Yeah, and those shoulders might be burning out a bit. It's just so static going up, and it's such a physical boulder, as we said. But making the campus look good every time. Oh, this time she has to keep the heat, the toes in, and that could be an indication that she's done, I think. Yeah. Okay, good performance from her. Sitting in fourth at the moment, so that won't be a podium. But it will be her best result if it stays like that. She came sixth before. The worst she can do right now is fifth. Okay, but. so regardless, it's best ever PB for her. Yes. And on Matsufuji comes on. She's sitting in third position. Anon has the opportunity to really cement her position in third place right now, or even bump up. Right, so lots of pressure on this young athlete's shoulders. Only 19. 
want to make an impression on the Japanese selectors. I think she's certainly done so, so far. Gets the heel in, still with the toe. Goes up and, yeah, trying to crimp the top of that. And as we progress through this last boulder, it'll become more and more clear what is possible based off of the results. After looking again, it, Anon needed to flash this boulder in order to be able to bump higher than third position. So now she's just fighting for that bronze medal. So she wants to cement herself on the podium. Two minutes 50. Hasn't spotted the campus yet. Matches the bad sloper, going all the way to the left, but makes it work with the right hand, and that heel should allow her to unlock the toes, but it's going to be a swing, and it is. Yeah, you're right what you said earlier about, you know, the, the harder method sometimes being the easiest one. You know, campusing is a physical move. You think, no, it's improbable off a sloper like that, but yeah, it looks like the way forward at the moment. Yeah, it's often true that having your hips close to the wall makes things easier just because your center of gravity is a little bit closer to the wall and probably the holds. But sometimes holds are best when your center of gravity is a little bit more directly underneath them. So on a steep wall like that, having your center of gravity underneath the hold probably means having it further away from the wall. Right, up she goes again, moves that hand to the left-hand side of that slope, but oh, slaps up with a toe in. Minute 36, she's going to have to find something different here. Or pull something out of the bag, make sure those holds are clean. We haven't seen the top half of this boulder. There's an interesting sequence where you kind of have to drop down onto a good foot, which you can't span across. Hopefully we'll see someone unlock that. But no one getting close to that zone so far. It feels like we've seen so much action on this boulder already, but we haven't even seen half of it touched. Oh, misses the pinch again. Less than a minute now. <laughs> Everyone getting into this in the audience. All focus on this fourth boulder. Gets the right heel in. Moves the hand. Slightly different with the heel already up. In 28 seconds, she might have one last one here. There are the coaches encouraging her as the camera switches to them. With it being the last boulder in this round, you have no reason to hold anything back. Might as well try it until the very, very end. Well, six seconds to go. She did give it everything. She's in third position. We'll have to see if that's enough. Gilu is up. Sorry. Anon joins the other two on the sofas. And there is Brooke Rabatou. All right, no time for nerves here, and at no point during this comp has she looked nervous. Total confidence from Brooke. Potential gold medal on the line right now. Jumps into the start, keeps the toes in. Big heel, one of her strengths. Just misses the right end. A bit shorter as well, that span even harder for her with the toes in underneath. Yeah, she's definitely going to need to find the method that works best for her height here, which I think is often one of her strengths. She has the ability to reach from the toe hook. I think we just saw that there, but like you said, it might not be the most comfortable position for her. And being so spread out, that means she'll have a lot of momentum to release if she is able to reach it from the toe. Yeah, now she releases it early. It's looking a little bit more promising. Oh. Such a slow move, but it hides how powerful that was from Brooke. Now she sets up for the big jump, locks it in and gets it on the zone. 
Well, this is it. This could be the potential goal right here we're watching. I think there are a lot of sweaty hands in this crowd right now. Right, she can't span this, drops into the first one, now comes down to the bottom. Into the good undercling. Has to swing herself around into it, spots the right foot. That marking on the wall, that needs to get in the zone and then bring the left up. She's going to do this, you know. And she wow. does, Brooke Rabatou, <laughs> with three tops. I, I hope she knows what that means. I think she does. <laughs> I think she does do too. Does. That is her first gold medal for Brooke Rabatou. She's got silvers. That wasn't enough. And tonight, I think a dream has come true. Wow. I don't have too many words to offer right now. That's absolutely fine. Look at this again, drops that toe in, the fling up to the zone, almost sideways on the wall. Then had to keep it together through the top section. Spotted the right foot very early on, bumped up to the top zone, brought the foot through, and at that moment, I think she knew it was done. Left through, match. And immediately that smile as she drops her head down. Super emotional here in the stadium, really cool to see as <laughs> she sits that smile on her face. I don't know if it's even fully sunk in yet for her. I mean, clearly she knows, but man, that is so much emotion to process. <laughs> Quinn, you said that your dream would be to interview the winner from your team, and you get the chance to do that in a couple of minutes. <laughs> I am already so excited. <laughs> Right, well, let's just take a breath here. We've got two more athletes to go, and everyone will be fighting for position. So, Zhu Lo. Let's see what she can do on this. Three zones. Can she get a top here? Adjustment with the hand, trying to find the best position on this slope. But heel locked in. Did a Brooks similar style move, trying to drop that left foot out, but a bit too quick, perhaps. So composed out there on the mats. She's the youngest athlete out here tonight, just 17. Big future ahead for her. Definitely from Team China, strongest female athlete currently on the circuit. Jumps up into this starting position, up to the sloper, looks for the heel again. finds the match, wants to drop that foot. It is all about slowly unlocking that left toe hook. Yeah, that toe hook really can be a bit of a trap, I would describe it as. The athletes we've seen be most successful, Brooke and Ayala, were able to release it earlier, and that seems to be the key. Although, I'm sure having the toe in makes those fiberglass volumes feel so much more positive, so you're pretty inclined to not want to leave it behind. Yeah, it's so locked in, isn't it? And it is a good toe hook, that. Right, she's very focused, though. Comes in, makes the starting position, bumps out again, looks for the heel where her hand is, adjusts that toe slightly. Almost hooks her own fingers there. Yeah, so the second Brooke slowly unlocked that toe, you see how obvious it is almost, and yet very, very difficult when you're out there. You kind of want to fling it out, go up for the hold. It looks good. So much strength required to be able to release that toe hook, though. It's definitely easier said than done. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a terrible hold, let's be honest, that left. Oh, but she does it early this time, which yeah. looked better. Right hand up, which is not what she wants. She wants the left on that hold. She's going to have to either match or press or something or drop back down. I think she's going to try for the match. Perching over that heel almost looked promising, but not an easy position to match from. Definitely easier to get your left hand there to begin with, as we saw from Brooke. Yeah, having a think there. 
as she looks up. Checks the clock, makes sure, 47 seconds. It's interesting to see how much pressure the athletes have to apply through the bottom side of these spot holds, whether it's with their thumb or their palm. Even though your fingers are grabbing the top more positive bit, you really have to create the tension through the bottom of the hold. Still looking powerful as once again she drops that left out, comes up, needs to get the left hand up, spots it, does this time. Dropping the pinky as she does and now needs to fling herself towards this zone and that's the point I think running out of power. Well, good performance from her at fifth. And Anon there as well. She realizes that that's her first medal. I tell you what, the emotions going on here. I'm, I'm starting to tear up in a commentary box. Like everyone is feeling it. It's incredible. Everyone is feeling a lot of emotion for sure. It was such a brutal round. And so the athletes who were successful, I think, are feeling a bit of relief here. Yeah, on that sofa, there's so much going on off screen, but let's focus on Hannah for the moment. Although she's guaranteed the silver, she doesn't know that necessarily. Well, she doesn't know that. And no matter what, you still want to finish on the best note that you can. So Hannah will definitely want to be get, getting this boulder done. Goes up with the right, switches to the left. Such strength still at this stage in the competition from Hannah. Now, though, this big move starts to go up statically, gets a bit of height, goes up, fingertips on the zone hold. Whew. What a competition this has been. Hannah Moyle has three minutes of this left, and this is how close she came. On the good part of the hold as well, almost had it. Yeah, that looked really, really promising. She was able to switch well from pulling over that heel to then really pushing and driving off of it and getting the height needed to reach the zone hold. Giving herself some nods. She knows that she can get this done. Yeah, you must get some confidence from it. It looks like she's still got the power in the arm. It's made those first couple of moves look really strong from her. Yeah, and now she has the opportunity to take as much rest as she decides she needs before trying again. Two twenty left on the clock. Bumps the hand up, then gets the heel, makes the match. We'll trust that heel as she finds the left, but staggers back and down. <laughs> Still, the kids in the audience screaming out. There's one in particular who's just losing their mind on the left-hand side here. <laughs> screaming gamber at the stage. I think. both under 10 and, and this is the future of the sport right here sitting in this audience this Japanese climbing community that is so into the sport so knowledgeable right Hannah takes some deep breaths with a minute 30 left to go clawing at that crimp making it almost Locked out. Oh, Ooh. it's about as close as you can get. Yeah, you can see it in her fall there that she really almost had at that time. Yeah, it's a committing move that because and when we saw Brooke go almost horizontal on the wall, you have to go that far, but it can cause that. You see her leg just slipping backwards there as she hit the deck. Sometimes the longer you hold on to something the weirder the fall position can end up. You saw that there. Yeah, and Hannah is a brave climber. I, I was saying to you, I think early on in the, well, maybe a conversation before in Innsbruck when she got her silver, how scary that final boulder was. She's got so, my, so much guts to do these kind of moves. But I think she's done. So, as you said, the podium locked in. Hannah gets another silver. Brooke, though, with the gold medal. Still can't believe it. Well, yeah. Hannah comes back. She'll look up at the score now. No, she's got a medal, but Brooke with a huge smile and a big hug from both those athletes.
Well, here are the scores. Brooke Rabidou, confirmation, three tops, one zone, and a gold medal. Hannah Moyle gets the silver. Anon Matsufuji, her first medal with a bronze. Ayela Krem after that in fourth. Jilu Lau in fifth. And Mia Krampel finally in sixth.